Here we go. Ah. Hi. So I did something interesting. I did a little photo shoot and compared the Sony a6500 versus one of the most popular photography cameras in history, the Canon 5D Mark III. What? So a company called Kate Backdrop reached out and asked if I could review a couple of their backdrops. And so I said, sure, send them my way. By the way, they did not sponsor this episode. I am not being paid by them in any way. They just wanted me to review their backdrops and I did. So I'll get to that later in the video. But first. Okay, let's get to it. So back in the day, I used to do a lot of fashion photography. So it was really nice to get back into the scene again. I didn't have time to book a studio, so I just got a room and asked some friends to model for me. I wanted a simple and classy look, so they got all fancy for me. As for lighting, I use one light source because I wanted a nice contrast ratio on the subject's face and create a natural fall off for the background. The strobe that I used was the Profoto B1 500 Air, which I freaking love, along with their light dome and remote transmitter. And lastly, I brought in a reflector just in case I wanted to fill light or create some catch light in their eyes. As far as the cameras, I thought a fair comparison between the two would involve using the same exact lens. So I used a Sigma 50mm art lens for both cameras. To use EF lenses on the 6500, I attached the Sigma MC11 adapter, which is probably the best adapter for Sony cameras in my opinion. And I also made sure the settings on each camera were as close as possible. Same f-stop, shutter speed, etc. But enough of me talking, here are the results. Actually, let's play a little game. I'm gonna put up two images and you decide which camera produced which image. Ready, go. So what are my thoughts? Well, to be honest, it's a tie, but for different reasons. Now, I honestly didn't think that the 6500 would do so well, given that the 5D Mark III is such a workhorse of a camera, but the A6500 outperformed the Mark III in sharpness and autofocus performance, even with the MC11 adapter. The face to tech and eye autofocus feature of the 6500 was a huge advantage over the Mark III, which I found to be incredibly helpful for when shooting subjects like people. However, Canon has the advantage of better colors, especially when it comes to skin tones, and you just can't beat Canon in that area. The image quality of the Mark III was overall better, but that certainly doesn't disqualify the 6500 at all from shooting professionally. As you can see, it did a killer job. And like I've said before, the gear doesn't always matter. It's all about the person behind the camera and the results they produce. And at the end of the day, it's the results that matter. Okay, on to the backdrop review. So usually I prefer my backdrops to be solid, like on roll paper or on an infinity wall. It's great for print and overall produces a really clean look, which I like. But for this particular shoot, I asked for a gray cloth material and another backdrop of their choice. When they sent over the backdrops, it came with creases and wrinkles, just like any other material backdrops. And to fix that, I simply used a steamer to get rid of those creases and wrinkles. And once done, we hung the backdrop to the stand and let it drape like a curtain. Drape like a curtain. Drape like a curtain. And as you can see from the images, the key light produced some cool and subtle shadows to the background, which gives the overall image some texture. There was a bit of shine in the material, which I wasn't a big fan of and didn't expect, but for this particular shoot, I think it added to the vibe that I was going for. Trip like a curtain. Trip like a curtain. And as for the other backdrop, it's printed. Not a big fan of printed backdrops, but I thought it would be a cool challenge to make it work. In these images, I wanted the focus to remain on the models while the backdrop fell subtly into the background. I achieved this by bringing the strobe and model further from the backdrop and use a low aperture like f1.4 to create some separation. So for the most part, I thought it worked. I will say, however, that when we steamed the backdrop to get rid of the creases and wrinkles, some of the ink bled a little bit. I don't know if that's a common thing with printed backdrops, but again, I don't usually shoot with printed backdrops. Not my thing. But they do have a bunch of other backdrops on their site if you're in the market for one, and you can check them out at katebackdrop.com. So now let me turn it to you guys. Which camera do you think did better? Let me know in the comments below, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Also, if you're new to this channel, then let me officially invite you to subscribe. I freaking love making content like this because I genuinely love helping creatives like you out there. So I encourage you to subscribe and check out the content that I've already produced. Huge thanks to Kate Backdrop for sending me over their products to me to review. If you wanna check them out, it's in the links below. And bigger thanks to you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I love this community. I love you guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.